Welcome to another episode of the Stellar Sound Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to astronauts, all the while rocking it on all the interdimensional space traveling writers that empower creative musicians everywhere. I'm your host, Piedra, and today I'm joined by the Els, Manuel. Um, but first, to become part of our interstellar presence, find us at stellarsoundpodcast.com on all social media platforms, Stellar Sound Podcast. Or join our astronauts in the Stellar Sound Community Discord server. Links are in the description. So today I'll be talking with the Els, um, and we can see only Emmanuel today. There's also Art Club, but you could join us. Uh, and they're a duo based in Namibia that really cannot be described with just one genre. And they combine singing and vocal harmonies with guitar and djembe sounds that take you to this flowy, kind of feel good music journey. So, how are you today? <laughs> I'm good. I'm awesome. Good. <laughs> Amazing. It's a, nice, it's a nice Sunday here in Namibia. Nice clouds. We actually like clouds here. <laughs> so yeah, it's really lovely. It's cool. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Um, yeah, so maybe let's start with a little bit about your band and how you ended up playing together. And I heard in another also interview that you met in 2015 like at a warehouse yeah right where you saw each other playing but do you remember yeah, like yeah. the first impression you had about Artwell or maybe like how did the first conversation go um well for me I, it was after high school so after high school i took a gap year and i was uh like going out to different bars pubs and restaurants and stuff and I, I met him a few times, well, not met him, I saw him performing with uh, some other people, you know, because he was he's very good at collaborations and stuff. So that's how I, I saw him. And then I had a few gigs with um, some of my um, friends from high school. And um, when when he, he saw me play for someone else, he saw me play for someone else, and... He wanted me to be his guitarist. So on the, yeah. So we met each other in the streets again and he's like, I'm gonna call you. And I'm like, yeah, man, cool. <laughs> and then he called me and we played a few gigs together. We didn't have a name yet. And then I came up with the name, you know me, like being young, being all like, ooh, this is nice. So his name is Artwell, right? And my name is Emmanuel, so at the end it's L, so the L's, that's that's where it comes from, yeah. Um, but yeah, you were already playing before you met, right? So uh, yeah. how was it to play first few times together and at what point you were like, yeah, we're going to make a band out of this? Um, like the first few times, it, it was really easy. I think that's why it was also easy to form a band. Like. If you, I mean, two different styles, right? But if you start playing a song, you know when you go for jam sessions and jam sessions just work out because no one's trying to overpower the other and you're just trying to make the sound better, you know? Almost like a resonance effect, I don't know. So it just worked. And the thing is, his voice is like really, really deep, really deep and like raspy. And then I have a lighter voice. So when we sing, it's like we're filling out the different frequencies of low, mid, and high. So it just kind of worked perfectly. Yeah, it was really easy to play together. And your concerts, it also seems like you're kind of jamming quite a lot there. So how much, I guess, of your performance is actually like kind of pre-set and how much of it is kind of improvisation more like, yeah, or jamming? Um. All right, so I think we'd like to separate concerts from gigs, right? And not to say that we don't put effort into both of them. So if it's a, if it's a gig, you never know what to expect, right? You never know what to expect. And especially being right now mostly a cover band, we have like a pool of songs that might work, you know? So those songs are already prepared beforehand, right? So the songs are already, it's not like I'm going to sing some song I've never sang before on a stage, but the, 
the um, the performance and the delivery is improvised. Like maybe one day some song we might sing it slow, another day we might sing it quickly or fast. And it also depends on how we feel. Like you know, if the crowd wants to have a nice like banging show, you can even I mean you can even play Adele's song very quickly and it'll work. Or you could play if they want it softly. You could play a really powerful song just slowly. You know, so it's a mixture. It's a mixture of both. I mean, honestly, let, let's say we let's say we got a gig and we went to a place and we just saw like everybody here likes heavy metal. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna change the style of playing to kind of work with, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You already mentioned the audience, so I guess my next question is. Um, what kind of audience reaction do you expect when you go to play? Or like what kind of reaction would you want to see when you're playing? Okay. Um, well, if I, if I can say an involved reaction, like we understand that, of course, if we're playing in a more serious setting and background music is required, we don't really expect anything. You just like... Even uh, even feet tapping is is perfect if it's in a serious setting, but if it's in a fun, playful setting, you want to get the crowd to sing, right? You want to get uh, people up on their seats. You want to get them dancing. You know, if they come out with their partners and they're dancing in front of you, going crazy, like that's that's kind of what we want. And if we sing. Um, like very, very beautiful sing-alongs. And you know, when they have the lights, the lights out type of thing, and everybody's hand-waving. So those are the type of reactions, and that's what we try to create, you know? So some when, when we get the chance to create those things, we do it when we see that you can't really, you know, yeah, it's, it's also fine. You play according to what you meet, right? Of course. Um, and you also play, like, because I saw on your social media, you always share, like, a lot of concerts in, like, bars or restaurants or those type of places. But you've also been yeah. to a few festivals. And what is the difference both in the audience, but also in the way, for example, you prepare for those concerts? Yeah, yeah. So for festivals, you definitely have a sound, right? You have your... <clears throat> Sorry. Um, like the last festival we did was at um, it's called the Beach Bash in Swakopmund, so it's all the way in the coast in Namibia, and um, yeah, there you rehearse, you know, and you just play them back to back. On at this show, we got the early shift, and the early shift is at twelve, and it's hot, so. You don't, you don't really get much of a crowd, you know what I mean? It's understandable. It's actually, it was actually a DJ festival, so us getting an opportunity to play there it was, it was a pretty good thing. So that's the most recent festival we did. Other ones, you know, you the crowd sits, they listen, they sing your originals. Because if it's, if it's festivals, we play a higher percentage of originals than we would if we were like, at clubs or at a bar because we're trying to get people in, uh, to know our songs and stuff. But Slick, for example, has played in Norway and he has played in um, Malawi. So, of course, there the music scene is bigger and the re reactions are much bigger. And I know one time when I was in Germany at uh, in Bayreuth, I played at something called a Living Room Concert. So it was just me there in a small room with like maybe 70 people just packed in. Now that was, yeah, I played mostly originals. They love that. Yeah, that's that, that sounds pretty like reasonable, I guess, to, to play more also covers, especially if people don't know you. Uh, but now yeah. I'm kind of wondering if cases where you play your original songs and people also start to sing because they already know you or when they recognize you in the street maybe while you're walking and how do they react to it if they if they recognize you like do they go to you and ask for an, i don't know a picture or something or or that doesn't really happen yet um it's 
Uh, so what happens is they recognize you on the streets and then they say, hi, you're that guitarist. Oh my God, I love your music. And some people have sang my own song to me. I mean, uh, I, I get goosebumps and stuff. Um, there's an artist here who, well, he says we inspire him. So he knows about four or five of our originals and he performs them in other places and people want, they actually want to know these songs where they can find them. And we haven't recorded them yet. We're like, we started just before COVID, you know, going to studio and stuff and you know what happened in COVID. So everything kind of took a back seat and we're trying to finalize those kinds of things this year again, you know? So yeah, people, I haven't, no one has asked for an autograph yet. The Namibia is, uh, I guess, there are not many fanatics here, I, I think. But yet again, I'm not a super mega star, so I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, well, maybe in a few years. Uh, that will happen. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, yeah, we're pushing, we're trying. Like this year, we want to we wanna play three festivals, um, two, two in the middle, maybe one outside or doesn't really matter, but to play three and certainly to apply for festivals, you need your own material because you can't go to a festival with covers. I guess you can get away with playing one cover, you know, of someone who died in 1920, you know? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's better to have originals. Um, and when you said that uh, people like want to know where they can find you, where can they, where can they listen to you? So you don't really have a lot of songs like on YouTube. You don't really have a Spotify account. And do you think that when you manage to record those songs in studios, will you upload them and hear them? Oh, definitely. Like, I, I'm, I want to get music out there. It's the moment we do, we're going to share it everywhere because right now we just post on our Instagram and we did have a few videos on our YouTube, but we're trying to now be a bit more professional. So we, we took them down and uh, now we're going to be uploading because most of the videos we had were from people's phones, you know, and that shouldn't be the bulk of what you have on your, um, on your YouTube, you know, we should have stuff in studio or even if it's a live show, the recording should be through like your um, your DIs and straight into the computer, you know? So we'll definitely be trying to be on all platforms, on Spotify, on iTunes, on um, like, I mean, DistroKid, he distributes everything for you to so many platforms. But you've been already playing together for around seven, eight years, right? Yeah. Um, so how did your band change throughout that time like maybe your the way you create music maybe the way you practice maybe the way you kind of feel each other um well i think our, of course our chemistry is uh our chemistry is like crazy tight like there are times when i get so surprised that like he knew what song i was about to play next and we haven't we haven't rehearsed this you know and then he knew what i was about to play next um or just when when he goes off on a tandem to improvise, how I just jump in and we're making stuff up on stage, like because you know it's improvisation. Because the next show we can't do it again. <laughs> you can't do it in the same manner you did it before. You know, so the chemistry the chemistry has really grown. Um, like and I've noticed as more gigs happen because we had 75 gigs last year, which we were so grateful for. So as we play oh, wow. more, you, you tend to, you tend to uh, practice less, you know? Because, I mean, 75 gigs, if you average two hours, um, and they tend to be exhausting, and then during the week, you have like your other commitments and stuff. So, I mean, it's not something I would want to keep doing because whether whether I like it or not, you need to structure time for your own rehearsal, 
you know, because I mean, I want to be able to solo like John Mayer, you know, <laughs> that type of thing. I want to be able to try newer, crazier things on the guitar, like live while it's happening, you know. I want to be able because we're a two piece band. But I want to make it, people say we sound like a four piece band. I want to sound like a 10 piece band because of how much we're doing on stage when it's necessary, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think also like singing has improved as well because I, I can say when I, when I started performing in 2016, I also started singing publicly. And I remember I couldn't hold a two hour gig because it's hectic, your voice gets tired. So now, now I can hold like, I can hold a four hour gig back to back every day. <laughs> you know, so that type of voice strength. Oh, wow. I mean, it's not that's, recommended that's to sing impressive. every day. For... <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So that's that, like four hours is a lot of singing, yeah, every day. It's a lot. And I mean, you have to be jumping and all of that. Yeah, and you started playing music when your mom bought your guitar, right? And you started like learning from a book. As far as I know, you mentioned <laughs> that in another interview. So how was yeah. that journey? Like, why did you decide to play? And how did you get hooked up? Maybe how you stay motivated to do that? Oh. So I just, I just knew I always wanted to play the guitar, but maybe, well, okay. When I was 12, my favorite band was the Jonas Brothers. And I would karaoke. My mom bought me a karaoke set. And I would karaoke to the Jonas Brothers. I didn't even know what I sounded like, but I would just be singing. <laughs> and then uh, I'd be, I think I'd be like fake, faking the guitar. And then one day I asked, can I, I would like a guitar. So she, she bought me an acoustic guitar. I still have it, by the way. She bought me an acoustic guitar. She then bought me a book. So of course the book tells you the frets, strings, um, what chords are, and yeah, that's where it started. And so, because I know I wanted to sound nice, I could go past the pain. So I'd just keep playing, keep playing, keep playing until I could change without buzzes, and I could change, and I could change, and I could change, and I'll be singing as well at the same time. So that's how it all really started. Now, the thing about guitar is when you, when you can kind of make melodies with chords, you tend to forget practicing because you're like, I can sing now. I can make things sound awesome, you know? So I then I didn't practice for a while. And then we went to England, Manchester, and I met this guy called uh, Sebastian. He was awesome, man. He would, uh, you know, he was... Like, he studied music as well, and he would just play some cool tunes on the guitar, jamming. And I, that was when I was, like, asking him about music theory and stuff. And that's where I learned a bit now about notes and scales and how to analyze music. Like, if I listen to a song now and I play it, I find the root and I play it. Now, when I know the combination, I know what scales it fits into and how I can play over it. You know, so... Yeah, that's that's how I started to play. I'll be singing to myself in like, of course, the shower or wherever, just anywhere. And I was just playing music because it made me feel good. I never thought about performing, you know, just because it made me feel nice. And only when I turned 16, I started writing songs. I remember the first song I wrote was... I wrote, the first thing I wrote was in Namibia. It was called uh, I Miss You. The second song was The Fixer. I wrote that in Manchester. Um, then, yeah, I started writing more and more. And now I've written about 15 songs. <laughs> Maybe uh, a bit also related to your songs that... Because you're not from Namibia, right? You were born in Nigeria. You also lived in yeah. Guyana for a while. So you mentioned that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how did you think that inspired your music and 
do you think that this also gives you some kind of uniqueness in the Namibian kind of sound music industry or because Arts World is also not from Namibia, it's from Zimbabwe as far as I know, right? Yeah, um, I think it does. Being, being like multicultural, I think is always an advantage anywhere because there are more sources of inspiration you can draw from or actually form part of you without you even knowing, you know? Because right now, if you ask me to sing a dance hall song, like a Jamaican song, I probably could because I lived in South America or Guyana, who is also part of the Caribbean, you know? It, it wouldn't be hard. If you wanted me to sing a Nigerian song, I, I can't, I'm Nigerian, you know? If you wanted me to sing a British or Western song, I can, because because of all of that. I mean, if you ask me to sing an Indian song, I won't be able to. <laughs> but probably if I uh, if I lived there, I would have, you know. <laughs> you still have time. Maybe someday. <laughs> Maybe someday. And like being in Namibia. Uh, I've also learned um, there's a language here called Afrikaans. I had to learn it in school. So I sing some Afrikaans songs and people thinking that you can't speak Afrikaans or because it's because of your accent and whatever. When they hear you sing something in their language, it hits home a bit harder because they hear it in a style that is very different from what they usually know, you know? And then the fact that it still like makes an impression it's, it, yeah, man, it's, it's more solid. So, it's, and also in like a language of Shivambo, there's a, there's a song we usually sing from this awesome artist called Rasiyama. He's been here since like the nineties. He's a legend here. So mm-hmm. I would like to do more songs that are not in English, but that people here understand. And now having such a wide repertoire of music, you don't only cater for a certain audience, you know? You cater for a wider range of people and at the end of the day, that's what you want to do with your music. I want to make, frankly, I want to make music to include aliens, you know, if they're out there listening in like Mars, they're going to just be bopping. Well, that would be very interesting to, to sing for aliens someday. Imagine an alien comes to your concert and, and they're like, uh, <laughs> I heard you from I'm not saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I've heard that Namibia doesn't really have that well-established kind of music industry, for example, as does South Africa or some other countries. So what made mm-hmm. you stay there? Um, and was it like, is it a conscious decision? Is it because of music or is it because of other reasons that you were staying in Namibia? Um, so, well, I've been staying in Namibia since, since I was 12 because my, my mom's a medical doctor. So she got, um, she got a job here with, um, American NGOs and that's how we've remained here. Um, so I've actually, I just finished my um, bachelor's in electronics engineering. So the whole time I've been studying here and then playing music as well, you know? And now um, I want to actually, having, at times when you start music, it tends to be a side thing, a hobby thing. But just looking back, for me, it's been parallels with my um, like whole educational side because in the daytime i'll be doing book stuff in the evening time i'm doing music stuff and i want to continue doing both now you know so but now how that impacts me staying in namibia mostly i'll stay here for i, I want to live here I, I i quite like it here you know but then i still want to um tour go to other countries and play music there and come back here. And yes, Namibia's music industry isn't as established as South Africa. I'm glad you made a comparison because there is music here. You know, there's um, the local style here yeah, is um, Kwaito. Yeah, and then there, so there are big Kwaito artists and then 
they're big hip hop art, artists because hip I, I would say hip hop is not so big here, but the people doing it here are doing fantastic jobs. You know, like they're doing it on a level that it's a meaningful and they're making waves. And some South African um, labels are actually attracted to people here. Even nice some Nigerian labels are attracted to people here. You know, but now with live music. With live music, I still think it's 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 still fairly small because I can list I can list a handful of bands here, you know, that live performing bands. Maybe if I say fifteen, that's even pushing it, you know. But this is of the ones I know. Now they also branch out. Some have even gone to Europe to play. Some have gone to South Africa to play. Um, so yeah, it's. I know our contribution can really set the tone for the next ten, fifteen years. Because if if the other like budding artists see that musicians can actually make it in here and outside, then I think the music scene will be even bigger. I mean, if we can bring people from outside to Namibia to come and watch live music at festivals. I mean, that's. Yeah. I think that's 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 maybe our biggest dream to be to be bigger, to go out and to bring people here, and to take people out of here as well. It's just to have that back and forth, you know. Yeah, that's. I, I like the yeah. The maybe is awesome. <laughs> yeah, so, would you actually think about maybe even taking on yourself? Of like organizing some kind of festivals or as some kind of I don't know programs where people can go out and come in. Good thinking about it. I would. If I if if I could, I would. I mean, it's not so. I think it would be a lot of work now on top of gigging and um, what is it like studying and stuff. Um, but if I could, I certainly would. I mean, it only takes if it takes music to blow up. You know, and then you know, you know, have the resources and the connections. I mean, I'll allow a local band to open for us, you know, or we open for a bigger artist and have a guest play with us, type of thing, so that you just, you just, you, let's include more people. I, I would, I would do it. And you already have collaborated with uh, a few artists, like the Corona concert that you had online was with Sean K, for example, right? But if you could play yeah. with anyone out there in the world, who would that be and why? <laughs> wow. Well, my favorite artist is John Mayer. He's, I think he's... I know, like, I know so many of his songs. I cover so many of his songs. Um, I'd love to play with John Mayer, definitely. Um, Bon Iver, Coldplay, because I listen to them all the time. I think, like Bon Iver, the way he writes, partly why I like them so much is also their songwriting skills. Bon Iver, Coldplay, you know? Um, I would love to play with, um, I think like like Burner Boy has such a crazy vibe. Like we watched him live, by the way, because he had a concert here in Namibia, and he's so chilled on stage. His voice is so like uh, so powerful, you know. And his band, the the beats they play, I would love to, I love to play with them. You know, they're so they're so groovy. I would love to play with Anderson Pack. Oh, I could I could list so many. I mean, Bruno Mars. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say, you never know what will happen. Maybe someday they'll be like, hey, let's, <laughs> let's play, man. <laughs> if you could have like your perfect performance, your perfect concert, how would that look like? Where would it be? Maybe how big it would be? Maybe you want like an orchestra playing behind you or, or something like go crazy. How would that look like? All right, so when I when I go running, when I go running, I uh, and I'm all right. I don't go running for fitness. I go running so I can listen to music and pretend that I'm 
playing at a live concert. And you know, when you're listening to music and your mind's going crazy, there's orchestras, there's like toms, there's everything. So a perfect uh, concert I'd like to do, full band, a bassist, keyboardist. I mean, we've done that before, but now I'm like talking on a huge stage. Bassist, keyboardist, um, maybe another rhythm guitarist, um, Slick playing his djembe, like the whole band has mics, like everybody can sing. So the harmonies are insane. Um, there's a massive choir just sat there and I have a conductor's uh, thing in my hand, you know, and I just cue the band like one, two, three, and the choir starts this operatic thing, you know? And then, <laughs> So yeah, the choir starts that, and then the toms come in, the keys on the synthesizer type of sound, and I'm soloing on this rock electric guitar effect, and the crowd is going crazy, you know? You stop the band singing, and the crowd is just singing. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, that would be a nice one. That would definitely be a nice one. I would like I would love to just be in the audience to see this happening. You know, sometimes we uh, we get we get shows like that at um one of our favorite places to play at the Goodfellas. If you ever come to Namibia, you should go there and eat. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. Um they serve pizza. So because now that we've played there a lot and we've played around a lot so people know us. So they and we, we we know how to get the crowd going. Now you start a song, and you, when you hear the crowd sing, you play softer. The crowd finishes for you, and then you get this thing going where you're queuing sides of the table. You know, you want the right side, and the right side sings. You want the left side, and the left side sings. You know, you can't. It, sometimes it sounds too good. You don't even want to sing anymore because, I mean. I'll take a gig any day when we're playing and the crowd sings 60% of the time. I think that is that is just perfection when the crowd is singing, mm -hmm. you know? This, no, I was walking and then this, um, this lady just came up to me and she's like, wow, you know, I came here with my friend and we weren't certain if we wanted to come, but then we came and then we didn't want to leave anymore. You know, we just thank you. There was, she was saying thank you, and I'm just there like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to do when when people like show you love sometimes. I don't, you know, because whatever, whatever they're feeling, you know, you're not thinking about, you're not thinking about that. You're just, you're playing music because it feels good and you want to, spend time with the crowd you know like make that moment memorable but the way the the different ways that it becomes memorable it's not really up to you so when you hear the when you hear the stories you're just like wow you know people give you long hugs they sometimes people cry you know it's just when there's this rush of energy yeah, it's it's crazy. It's crazy, and I'm and I'm glad. I'm glad we. I'm glad we don't think about those things because I don't want to ever make it like formulaic. Like now, I want to do this to get this. You know, you just whether it's one person or a hundred or a thousand in the crowd, you just do. You give your all, and whatever happens, you know, happens. <laughs> Do you have any stories like maybe when you were traveling somewhere with guitars or something like some kind of cool stories about your guitars or that never nothing interesting ever happened? Because um, you did mention that you had a concert, for example, on the plane once. Oh, yeah, we forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was, you, <laughs> that was cool. Um, so it was for uh, um, Fly Namibia, and 
Yeah, they they said it'd be our in-flight entertainment. Like they were like unveiling their airplanes and their new travel routes. So it was such an awesome opportunity. Like there were camera guys on board. There were some guests having their first flights, and we were we were jamming it out on the plane, man. It was it was pretty cool. Look, I, for a, for a once-off thing, it's fine. But on small planes, it's so loud, like it's so crazy loud. And I mean, there are no amps, so it was the acoustic guitar. So we would have to, we started in the front end of the plane, then we had to move to the middle. Then we moved to the back, you know, in-flight entertainment, it was cool. (laughs) Yeah, it was really cool. Fly West Air, thank you, Fly West. Fly Namibia, thank you. And where was it flying to? Um, we flew to we flew to uh, Ondangwa. Yes, it's a town in um, the north of Namibia. So we flew from Vinduk mm. to Ondangwa okay. and back. Okay. We did this two days in a row. One of them was on the plane. The other one was like we literally went. We set up at the airport and we jammed. Um, this... yeah, was there yeah. anyone who? Was there anyone from the audience who kind of went to you and they're like, oh, I know you guys, or started singing with you? Yeah, like, um, the thing is, the, because the media is quite small, you know, there's 2.5 million people here. So, um, and in the entertainment industry, you tend to see similar faces, you know, because what's, what's nice is if, if people see that they work well with you, you know, and you deliver good performances, whatever your craft may be, they would want to work with you um, constantly, you know? So we get to see the same faces all the time. Like our sound guys are the same and they're awesome. The camera guys are the same and they're awesome. That they see us, we're like, guys, I'm, we're, we're tired of you guys, you know, but then <laughs> we're not because the fact that we get to see each other, you know, it means that things are good and that's, that's what we love. Uh, and just before Corona started, you were planning a tour in Europe and there was like a fun me page as well. Um, so I'm guessing it didn't happen because, well, pandemic, but do you still have plans on, on touring anytime soon or um, trying to get the money again for it? Um, so we want to tour, we want to tour, right? But this time around, we want to tour playing original music because I think we've been doing this long enough that, um, and that's what it requires anyways. It requires to tour the original music. So we will still try to try for Europe, um, try for South Africa. South Africa is next door, you know, and there's so many like, festivals in Africa in SADC that we can do, but primarily we have to get music out, you know, get music out and from our end, boost it as much as we can, boost it as much as we can, perform as much as we can, you know, because it might only take two festivals to now get you to play at 10 the next two years, you know? Mm-hmm. So we, we, we will love to tour we're applying for festivals already, you know, whether or not our music's out or not, we're still applying for festivals, listing what we've done. And yeah, it's honestly, I, w- I would love to do 12 festivals in a year, meaning January wow. to December to do one every weekend. Cause if you, if you think about it, I guess the biggest challenge will be costs getting there. But if you're popular enough, that wouldn't be a challenge. Now, let's say if you have other commitments during the week, you pick uh, one weekend where you fly on a Friday, you go there, you perform on a Saturday, maybe a Saturday, Sunday, and then you come back on a a Monday, you know, and you do this once in a month. Ah, That will be incredible. If you ever come to Europe, definitely let us know, you know, uh, it would be really nice to, to hear you live. And of course, if I'm ever in Namibia, I'll, I'll try to follow your... Oh, please, please. Performing. 
I got accepted for a master's program here for data science. So that's going to take up my, my day. And at times people are like, oh, how are you doing all these things? Um, I mean, typically work, school stuff is from morning till five, you know, and music is then mm -hmm. after five. And it's a whole different type of, uh, yeah, it's, it's a whole different experience because let's say you're strained from doing all this mental work, you know, music just energizes your your body again. So, and also, I'm having, I'm, music is like fun. You're just, you're having fun. Yo, yeah, so, yeah. I know 75 gigs sounds a lot, but it doesn't, it doesn't interfere, it doesn't interfere with, um, it doesn't interfere with my schooling and stuff, which is, which is what I like and which is why I could do them simultaneously for so long. Yeah. And I would love to keep it that way, you know, I would love to, because I think when I thought about it, I could never choose one thing. I didn't want to choose one thing because I love engineering and I love music, but I really felt strongly that I had to go to school for engineering. And then with music, I could practice. Like music affords you this whole thing of your own style. Frankly, if you're not your own style in music, it's actually worse for you. So <laughs> in a sense, doing music on your own tends to be better for you, you know, because it's not such a, it's not such a rigid, it's not an industry of so many formalities and this is how things have been done, you know, because with music, you're always, you're encouraged to break norms all the time. In engineering, not really, you have to stick to certain laws. <laughs> Uh, but for those maybe people who are still afraid to get out there, maybe they don't feel like they do music well enough. Do you have any advice on how to kind of uh, get your strength and just go out there and maybe perform live or upload your music? Like, yeah, how do you get um, that confidence? Well, you, you just have to play. Like, honestly, you just have to keep playing. Um, if you, if you doubt yourself, I mean, we all doubt ourselves. Even now, I still doubt myself, but you will never get anywhere if you actually didn't play, you know? Um, and mind you, it's also fine if people don't like your stuff. Like, if the fact that genres exist tells you that people are into different things, and I think it's just know that not everyone will like your music but that doesn't mean you should stop and it's it's a perfectly normal thing to only like for only a certain set of people to like you it's 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 normal and frankly there's nothing you can do about it you know some people don't like spicy food can you blame spicy food you know you can't but whatever your craft is you just have to try and do your best man i mean Obviously, you should be very critical of yourself. Like I think at times, I mean, yeah, it's one of the most awkward thing where you see people perform and they might not be very good, but they think they are incredible. And it's that mismatch that kind of put people off the most. But if you are critical of yourself and you really check the points you... Um, need to improve on like self-reflection that stuff is the best because you're gonna work on that and then that just makes you a more perfect version of yourself remember you're only perfecting yourself when you do that so that's my two cents <laughs> beautiful yeah it definitely agree with you um, I guess even if you perform and you're not that well, but as long as you understand and you don't think that you're perfect and you still think that you can improve, you know, go and perform them. I mean, just yeah. have a realistic understanding, I guess, of your of your skills and your abilities. 
Um, and because we're coming to an end, I guess yeah. I want to do. Yeah, I would like to move to a segment called "Behold the Meteor Shower," and it's a segment of like rapid fire questions that you will have to answer with like the first answer that comes to your mind. So, are you ready okay. for it? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> if you could be an instrument, which one would you be? Piano. Uh, what's your favorite color? Green. TikTok or Instagram? Instagram. It's the only one I know. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Playing in a, like a bar, cafe, or a festival? Festival. Uh, the last song you listened to? Oh, it was... <laughs> I'm trying to think. It, it was a uh, bonus. It was. It's uh, by Steve Aoki. I was running, so it was like bomb, don, 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 don. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, what's the best musical advice given to you? Yo, um, I think dynamics. Dynamics, man. <laughs> that yeah, that just means listen and just move with the thing. Dynamics, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, and which musician should we all be listening to right now? Oh, that's hard. <laughs> oh, that that wow. The first wow. one that comes to mind. There's no right wow. answer. Wow. There's no right answer. Then I'll just say the L's. The L's. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that sounds very good. Um, and if you were in a fight, which instrument would you use as a weapon? I would use a guitar. Have you seen the the head on a guitar? And you just hold this. That's true. Could smash someone pretty well, yeah. You know, like how they do on the, on the stage sometimes. <laughs> yeah, not with an acoustic though, because it would it would just break. You need a solid yeah, wooden electric guitar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I just wanna yeah, thank you for joining me at the Stellar Sound Podcast today. Um, but before we go, I do want to give you a chance to like shout out to any platforms or projects before we go. So if you want to share anything. I don't know, your social media or or something, we're gonna tag it of course and in all the posts that we share about this podcast, but if you want to share anything, just go for it. So you have the platform. Well, of course, shout out to Artwell. He wasn't here for the interview. So shout out Slick RT. Um, shout out Goodfellas. We're playing there next week, Saturday. It's in Namibia, unless you want to fly from wherever you are. It's here. It's a really lovely place. Um, yeah, shout out to... Nam Rage, we want to play at uh, Sounds of Summer, man. We're gonna we're gonna try and convince you guys. It'd be awesome. We want to be the first live band to play there this year. So yeah, and shout out Riverside. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Is it Gear Gear Gidri? Uh, Gidre, yeah, <laughs> close. Gidre, Gidre. Okay, Gidre. Well, thanks for having thanks for having me. This was this was awesome. You're really nice. Yeah. Okay. So just for everyone, remember to follow us as well in the Stellar Sound Discord community or head over to our Instagram for the latest updates. And I guess, yeah, all the fellow listeners and astronauts there from myself and from Emmanuel, I want to thank you for joining us with this Stellar Sound podcast. Uh, but the countdown has begun and it's time to blast off in our stellar sphere. So remember to empower creative musicians everywhere and hope to see you next time.